return to sport testing for upper extremity injuries. All right, so return to sport criteria, obviously very important after any sort of injury, where it's maybe a little bit more important is gonna be in our post-surgical patients. Now there's quite a bit of research on this in lower extremity. Think about your ACL reconstruction patients, meniscus, hip labor repair. We really don't have as much research in the shoulder, although it's probably important that we have criteria-based return to sport testing for the upper extremity, just like we have the lower extremity. My name is Dan Pope. I'm a physical therapist and a coach. We help to build incredible clinicians who love their job through our online courses, communities, and mentorship programs. In today's video, we're gonna help make you 1% better. So a study by Otley et al. in 2022 was looking at criteria-based return to sport testing. And in folks that ended up passing all the criteria, they were less likely to get injured in the future having another episode of shoulder instability. So the folks that passed the criteria-based return to sport testing, their incidence of recurrence was at 5%, whereas folks that didn't pass the criteria-based return to sport testing, the recurrence was at 22%, so almost a five times greater likelihood of having recurrence after some sort of shoulder stabilization procedure. So we're gonna go over these exercises today, or rather these tests, but I do want you to keep in mind this was studied in a population of instability patients. It's going to carry over to your tenodesis, to your rotator cuff repairs. I'm not sure, but I still think it's a good idea that we have a battery of tests for patients to figure out whether or not they're ready to return to sport. To go along with the video today, I have a little gift for you. It's an evidence-based cheat sheet for shoulder instability. It's a four-page PDF that goes over everything you need to know about shoulder instability. We go over prevalence, anatomy, joint arthrokinematics, risk factors, and different types of instability, causes of instability, whether or not your patient should undergo surgery or have conservative care like physical therapy, and finally, rehab implications for all the different types of instability. So if you're looking to get up to speed about shoulder instability in less than 10 minutes, then this PDF is for you. I'll leave a link in the show notes in the description. Go ahead and click on that and then download it and then get back to what you're learning about right now. So yes, you want your athletes to pass this battery of tests we're about to talk about. We also wanna make sure we have adequate strength, adequate rate of force development. We also see adequate stability and adequate endurance of the shoulder. Now in terms of gauging your strength, Usually we use handheld dynamometry testing. And here's the thing, we're not going over this in today's video, but I will leave a link in the description where I show you exactly how I do this in patients who've had a slap tear or slap repair. However, we will be going over how to assess rate of force development, stability, and endurance with our tests upcoming. The other thing we're looking for is full sport-specific range of motion. And obviously this can be very different from athlete to athlete. So if a baseball pitcher, we want to make sure we have adequate total arc range of motion and maybe symmetrical flexion overhead. Now, from working with an Olympic weightlifter, obviously we're going to need the range of motion to support heavy loads overhead. We're also going to need good rotation range of motion to catch a barbell and a front rack. But keep in mind, the range of motion you need is going to be specific to what the athlete wants to get back to. We're also looking for adequate scores on outcome measures, particularly outcome measures that assess psychological readiness. I will leave a few of these outcome measures in the link in the description in the show notes for you guys to check out. The next is time. So most folks are returning back to sport after they've had a major shoulder surgery, somewhere between four and six months, with it being much more common to be at the six month mark to return to sport compared to four months. So here's the thing. In the study we're talking about by Otley in 2022, only five patients out of 40 something actually passed his criteria-based return to sport testing at the six month mark. So that means one of two things. Maybe we didn't prepare these athletes well enough by the six month mark, or maybe they actually need a little more time and six months is not reasonable for most patients. And lastly, we just wanna make sure we have a comprehensive phase return to sport progression, starting with very easy exercises, eventually going to specific exercises, plyometrics at some point introduced, then we get back to sport, we start with drills, and then more challenging exercises, and dose up over the course of time. One arm hop test. I actually think this is a very challenging test, so make sure your patient has practiced a lot of things similar to this before they actually try. So essentially, we're gonna have Christian here. He's gonna be in a one arm push up position, and we have a 10 centimeter step here. And I'm gonna have him jump up on top of this box and write down five times, set a timer, see how fast he does it. You can take a breather here. Yeah, it's tough, right? Very challenging. And what we're looking for is about a 4.4 second difference from dominant side to non-dominant side. So if you pass that, great, you pass the first test. 
And for this task for women, we can start on the knees and do repetitions this way, just because it is such an extremely challenging uh, test to do. Close kinetic chain, upper extremity stability test. Hardest about, hardest, the hardest part about this test is actually saying the name properly. But to set this up, we have two pieces of tape and they're 36 inches apart. And essentially we're gonna have, yep, Chris is set up with his hands on the tape. Let's get a little bit more wide on this side. Yep, fingertips kind of straight ahead where the tape is. And from here, we're gonna set a clock for 15 seconds. He's gonna try to tap his opposite side hand as many times as he can within that 15 second time frame. And a passing score is going to be 21 total taps or greater. For women, we can perform this test on the knees to make it a little bit easier. Another variations test you should definitely try is a modified like and subscribe test. So same setup here, 36 inches apart. Keep going, dude, there's more like buttons to hit. Back and forth, picking a video, fitness pain free channel, hitting that like button, creeping over to the other side, fitness pain free video, like button, back and forth. Upper quarter Y balance test. We're essentially gonna have our patient Christian here set up with his hand right in the center of these three lines. And from here, my instructions are to reach as far as you can without losing your balance in every direction, right? We'll go, yep, posterior, yep, and then posterior lateral, or excuse me, lateral there. Take a breather. What I wanna do as a clinician is mark how far he goes on each of these, and then compare left to right. A passing test would be 10% LSI, or different side to side. Posterior shoulder endurance test. Christian has just gone ahead and started on this test here. You can take a breather for now. But what we're supposed to do is measure your athlete. Let's say your athlete weighs 200 pounds. We wanna use 2% of their body weight. So that would be a four pound weight. And essentially we go in prone on your belly off the edge of the table and just perform T's to failure, right? So I would say for four pounds for a 200 pound athlete that's a good athlete, they're gonna be doing a lot of repetitions here. One of the things that may help is a set of metronome. So they're hitting the top of the movement and the bottom of the movement. And when they start to slow down, you can stop the test. And then basically you can take a breather here, Christian. We would compare to the other side and we're looking for more or less 10% difference side to side. Seated single arm shot put toss. So essentially we have Christian sitting up against the wall here and we like to have the wall so he's not cheating by rotating from his trunk. We're really trying to test the upper extremity, namely the shoulder here. He's gonna have a six pound ball. He's gonna have his elbow towards the wall here and he's gonna try to throw this ball as far as he possibly can. Go ahead and give that a hug. Nice, pretty good here. And what we wanna do is compare left side to right side and we're looking for somewhere between a three and 13% difference on the dominant versus non-dominant side. And generally speaking, especially if you're a throwing athlete, we wanna make sure that dominant side is going to be stronger. Ash test. So this is a great test for your overhead athletes, so throwers or swimmers. And we're assessing not just strength, but rate of force development. How fast do we produce force, which we know is going to decrease after major injury. So to set up for this, the first test position, have your athlete lay on their belly here, hand is straight overhead in eye position. And from here, go ahead and push down as hard as you can on the force plate. Yep, take a breather. From here, we're gonna turn your body so that you're doing a Y position. And we repeat the same test. Go ahead and push down as hard as you can. Push, 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 push. Yep, nice and fast. And then we'll turn some more so we're in a T position. And same thing, hard and fast, as much as you can. Go ahead and push, 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 and then relax. Obviously, the force plates aren't turned on right now, but you would take this data, you would just compare side to side, looking for about a 10% LSI, but in reality, your throwing side arm should probably be stronger than a non-throwing arm. All right, so now you have a good battery of tests for your athletes after they have a major injury. Now we need to know how to measure their strength as well as their range of motion. I have a video for you. Leave a link in the corner right there. Go ahead and click on that, and we'll go over range of motion testing for throwers as well as handheld dynamometry testing. Go ahead and click on that, and we'll see you there.